What's going on everybody? This episode is one I have been looking forward to for much of the series and that is object-oriented programming. Some of you are probably really excited and part of you are probably dying inside, but I'm going to try to make it as simple as humanly possible. I'll keep these videos nice and easy and short to the point. I won't even ramble for like 30 seconds in the intro, okay? I'll just get right to it. This video is sponsored by Visual Assist, which is recommended if you're doing C++ development inside of Visual Studio. If you're following along but using that editor, then check out the link, I'll drop it down below. So object-oriented programming is one of those things that it takes some time to kind of grasp the concept and the syntax for everything. So don't fret if you don't have it immediately. We're going to go through a fairly simple example and you should try to understand this material before moving on to the next video. So you start by creating what's known as a class. This is a blueprint, a structure that basically describes what something would look like. The class is then instantiated, fancy word. And this means we create something, also known as an object, based on that structure. So we have a class and then we can create multiple objects from that class. So here we are in our code. We still have some functions from earlier, but we're not going to need those right now. So don't worry about it if you're just jumping in for the object-oriented programming content. What we will do is we will define a class and describe some concept such as food. And then you will have curly braces. And note there's no parentheses like you normally define functions or if statements or anything like that. And inside of here, you're going to have the keyword public. And then inside of this, after a colon, is where we're going to define what a food looks like. So it can have different data attributes, such as a name, what the name of the food is, like banana or whatever other foods there are. Literally can't think of anything. And you can have any data you want. So let's say you were keeping track of the cost of all these foods you're buying from the store. You could have a double cost, double being just a number with a fractional part. So $10.15. Now this is the class. We're not actually making a specific food. To create a specific food, that's known as an object. And we can do that inside of our main code. So we will do that here. You will say what type the variable is and then give it a name. Now I'm going to name these both food, one lowercase and one uppercase. And people sometimes get annoyed that I do this, but I do this on purpose because it's convention. The lowercase refers to the variable. The uppercase refers to the type. There's no need for you to have different names for these. You should be able to look at these and just know what they are. So what I mean by type is we're actually creating a custom type here. Just like we could create a string or a double, now we can create a food. Pretty cool and the food can have different attributes. So food dot is how you access those different attributes and you can say name, give it a name such as bananas and food dot cost, give that a value such as $20.41. Pretty expensive bananas, but inflation, right? All right, so now how do we actually access these values? We'll say see out food dot name and let's go ahead and add a space and then food.cost, end L. We'll run this, and you can see it says the food name and then the cost. So it's basically a way to organize data, and it makes sense when we have a bunch of data around a certain thing, such as a food. So we can have data members like these here, which store some data, but we can also have methods which will do something. So we could say void print, and this can be used to print all of the data. So let's just go ahead and copy this example here, but we're going to have to modify it a little bit. So I'll cut that from there and paste it here. Clean up the formatting just a bit. You can see this food here now doesn't exist. We can actually just remove that and it knows what we're talking about. It's going to refer to whatever object we're currently invoking print on. So to use this, we will just say, food.print. Let's run this and confirm that we get the output we would expect. And there we go, we get the same exact thing. But since this print is related to the food, it just makes sense to put that inside of the class here. The cool thing is now we can create multiple foods. So if we wanted to create another food, we could say food2, and then we could say food2, make sure you have the two so you're not changing the other food name and we'll go with something like cheese and food two dot price uh, 
I don't know, $274. My bad. I got the attribute name wrong, so we want to make sure we go with the correct one there. And then we will say food2.print. So food2.print. Run this and see the correct output. Awesome. So it doesn't seem super valuable when we just have a really small class, but as this class grows and grows, it's a great way to keep things organized. This is the introduction to object-oriented programming, which is basically a whole paradigm of how we program. And doing this ourselves, creating our own classes, is going to help you understand a lot of the code that's out there. That's all I got in this episode. Stay tuned. We're going to be using this object-oriented programming for the rest of this series.